Hello, my name is Zach. Our group put together a little video about acute hepatitis. We hope this video will provide you with some useful information. Enjoy. So hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver that's mostly caused by viruses of hepatitis A, B, C, D, or B. Um, it can also be caused by substances such as alcohol, medications, uh, metabolic abnormalities, and autoimmune diseases. So the pathology of hepatitis is that liver cells become targets of the virus in two ways, either through direct action such as HCV or through auto, or I'm sorry, through um, immune response such as HBV. During acute hepatitis, um, there's a large amount of liver cells that become destroyed, which leads to the dysfunction of the liver. So mechanisms such as bile production, blood coagulation, blood glucose, and protein metabolism are also affected because these are all major parts of the liver. In turn with that, that means that the liver is not able to process drugs, hormones, and then it also can't detoxify. Um, usually, once the acute hepatitis resolves, liver cells start to restore as long as there was no further complications, and it usually goes back to its normal function. Alrighty, so the clinical manifestations of acute hepatitis. So typically, there's no symptoms, and the person that's infected may not even know that they have any kind of infection happening. Um, there's subjective side of this, which is what the patient can describe to us and what um, they are feeling. So either like fatigue, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation. They might have skin rashes, uh, possible low-grade fever. Uh, they usually have flu-like symptoms and abdominal pain which usually resides in that upper right quadrant. Um, that's where the liver sits, and that's usually from it being so inflamed. So during this time in the acute phase, it depends on what type of hepatitis virus the person has. So either A, B, C, D, or E. And typically these can last anywhere from one to six months. Um, during this time, the patient usually has a decrease in sense of smell, and food is usually really unappetizing, and that's why a lot of these people just don't like to eat very much. <clears throat> On the objective side, however, this is what, you know, we as nurses examine or what we can see from um, scans that we get. You can usually see an enlarged liver. We would um, assess swollen lymph nodes abdominal tenderness from when we palpate the skin or their skin would be jaundiced since the flow of bile is um, being disrupted during this time also their urine may appear darker due to the excess bilirubin that's being excreted by the kidneys and also their stools can appear more like clay and have a lighter color than normal from the inflammation of the bile ducts so also, as the jaundice begins to fade, this usually means that the recovery process is starting to begin. However, this can last from as little as a few weeks to as long as four months. And usually during this time, the patient still feels really unwell. They still have these flu-like symptoms, and they're also super tired. But the good news is that most patients with acute hepatitis usually recover completely, and the mortality rate is usually less than 1%. And those are the major clinical manifestations for acute hepatitis. In acute hepatitis, in order to determine the virus type, the patient's blood must be tested. For hepatitis A virus, the presence of anti-HAV immunoglobulin M is present in acute infection. Anti-HAV immunoglobulin G is present in previous infection or immunization. Hepatitis B has several markers for infection. Hepatitis B surface antigen is a marker of acute and chronic infection. Hepatitis B surface antibody can indicate previous infection or immunization. Hepatitis B E antigen indicates high infectivity.
Hepatitis B E antibody signifies previous infection. Antibody to hepatitis B core antigen indicates acute infection and does not appear after vaccination. Hepatitis B virus DNA quantitation indicates that ongoing viral repli replication is occurring. Hepatitis B genotyping indicates the genotype of the virus, which can be helpful in determining treatment. The marker for acute hepatitis C virus is the antibody to hepatitis C. Quantitation and genotype can also be determined with this virus. The presence of hepatitis D antibody and hepatitis D antigen are indicators of past or current infection. In hepatitis E, the presence of anti-HAV immunoglobulin M and G are present one, to one week to two months after the onset of the illness. Quantitation indicates ongoing viral replication. In addition to serum antibody and antigen testing, the patient's liver enzymes may be elevated. AST, ALT, and GGT are increased in the acute phase due to liver cell injury. Alkaline phosphatase is moderately increased and caused by impaired excretion of the liver. Proteins such as gammaglobulin and albumin can be normal or increased and caused by decreased clearance from the liver or liver cell injury. Bilirubin and urobilinogen are generally also elevated. Prothrombin time is prolonged due to decreased prothrombin production by the liver. Currently, there are no medications available for the treatment of acute hepatitis A virus infection. Treatment of acute hepatitis B is used in patients with severe hepatitis and liver failure. Therapies include nucleoside and nucleotide analogs. Drug therapies for hepatitis B do not cure the patient but inhibit replication. Some patients are able to clear the hepatitis C virus on their own. Others may opt for treatment using one of the direct acting antivirals. Drug therapy for hepatitis C is aimed at getting rid of the virus and preventing complications. With direct act acting antivirals such as NS34A protease inhibitors, NS5B polymerase inhibitors, and NS5A inhibitors, patients usually complete a 12-week treatment of oral drugs. Most patients that are treated with direct acting antivirals are able to eradicate the virus. Medications to treat symptoms may also be used and include antihistamines for generalized itching and antiemetics for nausea. Bromethazine and ondansetron are common choices. Hello everyone, my name is Ryan. I'm going to be going over some treatments, including rest, which is important for reducing metabolic demand. However, staying active can also be helpful at maintaining a good appetite. Which brings me to nutrition. Nutrients are needed for healing, so it's good to have enough uh, nutrients in your diet. Vitamin K and a B complex are good treatments for patients with nausea if patients are having a hard time eating. Avoiding alcohol because of the deleterious effects it has on your liver. Standard interferon, which is used for hepatitis B, and it blocks the synthesis, assembly, and entry of the cells uh, into cells of the virus. We also have the pe pegylated interferon, which is used for hepatitis B and C which has a polyethylene glycol component used to slow the elimination of the drug. Nucleoside and nucleotide analogs, which act as DNA components and prevent DNA synthesis, reducing the viral load of he in hepatitis B. Any healing will also be affected because of the drug is not direct acting. Fluid intakes, you wanna keep those around 2,500 to 3,000 milliliters a day. Liver transplant, which is used for end-stage renal or hepatic diseases. Alternative therapy, including milk thistle, which help promotes hepatoneogenesis, also reduces inflammation. Um, this was researched in a, a small study, so it isn't widely researched just yet. Prevention is going to include hand washing. That's good for any diseases. 
uh, control and screening used for hepatitis A, uh, especially for those handling food. Immunizations, we have those for hepatitis A and hepatitis B. None for hepatitis C. The immunoglobulin, which is for hepatitis A, used within one to two weeks after exposure. We also want to avoid blood for hepatitis B and C, with such measures as not sharing razors, toothbrushes, and using condoms. Potential complications of acute hepatitis include acute liver failure related to viral infection, chronic hepatitis related to worsening of condition, cirrhosis of the liver related to excessive alcohol intake, portal hypertension related to obstruction of blood flow in and out of the liver, and hepatocellular carcinoma related to poor health maintenance. Signs and symptoms to watch for for potential complications include yellowing of skin and eyeballs, increased pain in abdomen, disorientation, confusion, increased fatigue, weight loss, edema, nausea, and vomiting. Ways to prevent further complications include avoiding risky behavior, getting vaccinated, following instructions on medications, avoiding alcohol, maintaining a healthy weight and diet, knowing the health status of sexual partners, avoiding use of IV drugs, and avoiding blood and bodily fluids of others. Hey guys, it's Zach again here to bring you some nursing diagnosis for acute hepatitis. So first of all, we have imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements. It's related to bile stasis due to impaired liver function, as evidenced by loss of weight, lack of appetite. We also have fatigue related to a decrease in metabolic energy production due to changes in liver function, as evidenced by patient reports lack of energy. Uh, we also have situational low self-esteem related to diagnosis of hepatitis, recovery and treatment, as evidenced by depressed mood, verbalization of negative feelings. We also have uh, nausea, related to impaired liver function as evidenced by complaints of nausea, vomiting, and last but not least, we have acute pain that's related to inflammation of the liver as evidenced by complaints of pain. All right, thank you very much. That was our presentation on acute hepatitis. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, anything, please leave a comment and we'll get back to you. Thank you again. We hope you enjoyed the video.